Has someone ever said something to you that will haunt you forever? Or that has changed you forever? A few years ago I was at the store with my dad. We were about to get in the checkout line but he realized he forgot to grab something. I stayed up front with the buggy and wait on him. While I'm standing there I make eye contact with an older gentleman so I smile at him. I will never forget how that man's eyes lit up. He walked over to me, shook my hand, and thanked me. That thank you really impacted me. I brightened this man's day just by smiling. Now I make it a point to smile at everyone I make eye contact with regardless of my mood. I have no idea how to do this without looking and feeling like a huge pervert. I worked at a golf course on and off for 6 years through high school and college. My dad started teaching me the game when I was 7, but I've never been serious about it in the competitive sense. I like my leisurely walks through the green and the trees, but one morning when I was 18 I was working while a tournament was going on. Some guy didn't show for his team and my boss asked me to join and fill the spot, all while still on the clock. I agreed and met my team. Two older fellows and one guy in his 30s. Only remember the two older ones names. Bob and Ed. They were two old friends and were very kind. The round starts well, but as I mentioned I've never taken the game too seriously, so I still hit some bad shots here and there. Then those bad shots start getting more frequent. I felt like kind of and but, I knew that my game wasn't in any competitive shape and that whoever didn't show up probably would have done a lot better than me and that I was really holding these guys back and maybe even costing them some money. My frustration started showing and I'm usually very good at hiding it. After about 6 holes of this, on the 15th tee, Ed pulled me aside. He spoke very softly and clearly, and I'll never forget it. Son, I can see that you're getting upset about how you're doing. We've all been there, had days like these, it's nothing to work yourself up about. I went through Vietnam, and let me tell you something, a few bad golf shots is nothing worth getting upset about. Then he simply smiled, gave me a pat on the shoulder, and we went about the remainder of the round talking, talking and enjoying the rest of our walk in the sun. Years later, it still stays with me. Anytime I feel myself getting caught up in anger, frustration, or sadness I think of Ed and what he said to me. With all the horrors that he must have seen, he took the time to notice a young kid getting upset about something as simple as a game and bring him back down to earth. Thank you, Ed. This is one reason why I've stopped keeping score while playing golf. I'll never be good enough to be professional. Why go through all the frustrations of keeping score when you can enjoy actually playing golf? When you don't keep score, you tend to remember all your good shots holes and easily forget your bad ones. I know you've been expecting this, but daddy died this morning. Related, your mother is going to die sometime tonight. I feel you loud and clear. I worked for a local craft store, on Saturdays, the store would always sell the synthetic flowers, the ones you put on gravestones, for cheaper prices, I was working the register, when an old man around 80 years old came up and sat blue, purple, and yellow flowers on the counter, he looked me in the eye, and that's when his eyes turned red and his lips began to quiver, he croaked out, it would have been 54 years of marriage yesterday, and I can't remember her favorite color. I think she would have liked these though. His voice trailed off. I'll never forget the sound of defeat in his voice as he tried to retrieve what memories he was still capable of recollecting from his aged mind. It destroys me that people can be so in love, but once one of them dies, without warning they can start forgetting the little things. I never want to forget the little things. Totally unsolicited. An old man said this I was walking back to my car. 15 years ago, stop walking with your head down young man, look up and take control, I still remember, now I look up and smile, it makes a huge difference. I will say this to a young person, not today, but I will. Back in my senior year of high school, my friends and I all applied to design and arts based programs, graphic design, interior design, fine arts, I started taking art lessons much, much later than all my other friends. I actually started taking classes two years before applying to university whereas I had been taking lessons their entire lives, so naturally I wasn't all that confident in my abilities. My friends at the time were always encouraging though, telling me my portfolio was good enough to get me accepted everywhere I was applying. When I got accepted to my program of choice, 
We decided to celebrate and they told me. We were all sort of lying to you. None of us actually thought you'd get in anywhere. Completely crushed what little self-confidence I had in my own abilities. Anyway, that stuck with me throughout my academic life. Working hard to spite someone or to prove someone wrong is surprisingly effective at motivating yourself to work hard. Wow WTF. Bitchy art students. Get new friends ASAP, if you haven't already. My parents have been divorced since I was like 4, and on my 10th birthday my dad drove 6 hours one way, to give me my present and a small cake. He stayed for maybe 30 or 45 minutes and played my gift, SNES game, with me. Then before he left to drive 6 hours back to his house he told me, don't ever forget that I love you. I don't know why but that's just been a real emotional moment for me. I mean everybody in this world has pretty much the same amount of time. And he basically threw away an entire day of his life just to spend half an hour with me on my birthday. I love you. Followed three years later by, I just woke up one day and realized didn't love you anymore. Been haunting me ever since. Last Christmas I couldn't get enough time off of work to come for the holiday. My mother sent a simple card to me that said, you will be missed this Christmas. She passed away on November 18th. And I found the card two weeks before Christmas this year. It breaks my heart that I didn't get to spend my mother's last Christmas with her. This made my heart sink. I'm sorry. I was in the 6th grade, at a summer camp. All the kids were waiting outside in line for something, when a white haired man passed by, who was hiking through the camp. He saw me kind of standing alone, and he walked up, reached in his pocket and pulled out a little piece of yellow chalk that he put in my hand. Then he said son, make a mark on this world, then he just kept hiking. You were visited by a wizard. Here's a positive one. As a kid, I had musical talent. Probably a lot of musical talent. Now that I can compare it with others. My parents were clueless about what to do with me, and after we emigrated, I couldn't find a good music teacher, so no one really encouraged me. Because of that, I ended up quitting music at the age of 18 and going into another line of work. Many years later, I attended a music festival dedicated to a particular musical genre. At that festival, I met one of the biggest stars of that genre, and begged her for a lesson. She was happy to oblige, spent 2 hours with me going over all sorts of things, and at the end of it told me that I am a real musician, and that I have music in my soul, and that I have what it takes to make it in music. It was the first time anyone has ever been at all encouraging of my musical ambitions, and especially coming from a musician of such magnitude, it really did change my life. 6 years later, I am performing all over the place and working on my third CD. I guess she was right. You better not be Justin Bieber. I was robbed and held at gunpoint in Mexico when the guy asked me why he should let me live. I realized that I was 20 years old and didn't have an answer. I told him I didn't know and he looked at me confused. As though it was shocking that I had no answer for him. He looked at me for a second and looked over at his friend and it was as though time absolutely stopped. I just looked at him without fear or sadness. I really just did not care at that point. He turned back and looked at me dead in the eyes and in broken English said, Your life hasn't started yet. Those words still haunt me and make me realize that life isn't forever and you need to start it as soon as possible. When I was 15 my mum and dad went away on holiday leaving me alone for the first time. I ended up locking myself out of the house on the first day and frankly had no idea what to do. My next door but one neighbor Phil saw me standing there crying and came over. Long story short. He broke the door window to get in, replaced the window with identical glass and never told my parents, nor did he ask me to pay for anything. He said to me at some point remember dude, not everyone is a C. He also gave me my first joint. What a guy. Thanks Phil. Good guy Greg. Old and busted. What a guy Phil. New hotness. When I was young I asked my dad if demons were real and he said that the only demons are inside us. That stuck with me for some reason. No, John. You are the demons. My friend was told he had cancer during our junior year of high school. This was the second time he got it and we were all behind him ready to help any way we could. He went through chemo and we started a charity for him. My username. In our school. 
We surprised him one day with the money in the Facebook page. I sort of didn't hear about him for a while and sort of figured he was doing better. Turns out he was getting worse. Around the time I wanted to see how he was doing again and see him. We're told that he got to virus and since his immune system was so freaked up at this point, there was nothing we could do. The last time I saw him he was in a hospital bed in his family room strapped to an IV. I'll never forget how thin he was or exhausted he looked. He was asleep until he woke up briefly to say goodbye to everyone that visited him that day. The next week our group of friends were on a week long trip in Maryland when we got a call that it was going to be a rough night for him. And we had better come back. We rushed back but we missed him by a minute. I know a lot of people sort of look down on any sort of philosophical or profound statements made on Facebook. For good reason usually. But he said something that none of us will ever forget. I'm Derek. Life is worth living. No matter how bad things may seem there is always love and some purpose for you. If you just love peace will follow. The world is too fricked up to be negative. Being positive will change your life drastically. You will realize that your life is nowhere near as bad as you thought. Live life. Love much. Laugh often. Peace. It might not be anything that deep but whenever I'm having a particularly crappy day I remember how tough and happy this kid was with what he had to deal with. When I was 14 I got addicted to drugs and ended up breaking into houses to steal money. One of the families came to my court hearing and the judge gave them a chance to speak. I had violated them, their sense of security and safety in their own home. And the mother stood up and all she said was do good. You can do good. I've tried my best since then. Keep doing your best. I am the youngest of six. Family is huge to me. At the time me and my older brother were fighting about something so stupid. He was on his way out the door to leave for work and out of habit he said love you bye. I told him that I wish he were out of my life. He died in a car crash later that night. That was about 5 years ago now. Still weakens me. He knew you loved him. Without even the smallest trace of a doubt. He knew it. Not me but my mom. Many years ago my mom was working towards a master's degree in art history and was almost done. After she got her degree, she wanted to work towards becoming a college professor. She told this to one of her friends. This woman smiled then replied, Oh, well you know what they say? Those who can't do teach. After that encounter my mom said she felt depressed. She ended up taking up random jobs, none of which were related to the field of art history and traveling. She spent a great deal of her life. The past 35 years working as the manager of a pharmacy. Last year she was laid off after a large corporation came in and bought out the pharmacy. She is currently unemployed. Art is still her passion and, now that she has free time, she's going back to school. I hate people who say that. Got to be one of the most inaccurate things ever. What a nasty person. Two instances that stayed with me. I was in Amsterdam trying to catch a train up to my then GF's family reunion. I was really stressed because it was my first time in Amsterdam and I didn't speak any Dutch. Although everyone there speaks English the SAP was strong in me at the time. I was scowling and pee off because I was having a difficult time figuring out where to go, which train to get, how much it was going to be, when all of a sudden this lady, in her 50s, with white hair came into my space with a slight grin on her face. I went to ask her if I could help her or find out what she wanted and every time I went to say something she put her finger to her lips to shush me. I stood there puzzled and finally she put her index finger against the corner of her mouth and pushed it up. Then moved her finger across to the other side and pushed it up as well until she was smiling. I broke out into a huge grin and immediately felt better. She then turned and walked off into the crowd. Every time I get stressy travel eyeling I think of that moment. The second time was when I smoked. I was at a gas station buying cigarettes and this dude walked in and when I bought the cigarettes he just stated it's expensive no. I knew he was saying it to make me think about the negatives of smoking. Just in the manner he said it. Hard to explain without sounding a little douchy. He was just being a good guy Greg I guess. When I quit. I thought back to that moment and it helped me to quit smoking. TLDR 2 very brief interactions with complete strangers have changed my views permanently. I was thinking about this stuff the day before yesterday. I have always wanted to tell people about these stories but it never came up. 
I worked at a fruit stand that was run by an ancient Filipino man for all of high school. I had known him my whole life, and for most of the time I worked there I was the only employee. We always got customers and that he'd speak Tagalog to, and being a white girl I always just kind of awkwardly stood around. One day one of those customers came in and while they were talking, she pointed at me, and he pointed at me too and replied. When she left, I asked him what they said about me, and he said she asked who you were, and I told her you were my granddaughter. He had always treated me like I was, and I still feel like I have another grandparent looking out for me. Incredibly sweet. When I was really young, my parents got a divorce. For years after that, they shared custody of my siblings and me. It seemed like every time our father would pick us up for his weekend, there would be another fight. It was never physical, but it always upset us. Then, when I was 10, he came to pick us up again, but this time we didn't want to go. We hugged our mom close and cried that we didn't want to go, but she urged us into the truck and said, I'll see you on Monday. She told my dad to wait while she got our coats. After she went into the house, my dad sped off. I remember looking out the back window of the truck and seeing my mom standing on the porch with an armful of coats. Just staring at the truck as we drove away. That weekend she passed away. She had diabetes and had contracted pneumonia. She got pneumonia from the cold house that she couldn't afford to heat. Additionally, she would always sleep in the cold, so that my siblings and I could have the only space heater we owned. I'll never forget the look on her face as we drove away. I'll always be waiting for the Monday that never came. My heart just broke. You are either the kind of person that can tell a lot about someone by their shoes, or you can tell a lot about a person by their smile. I think you would prefer my smile to my shoes my physics teacher said this to me after realizing that I never made eye contact with anyone, just look down all day. I work at a call center for an ICE taking general tech support calls. Generally this is not a very emotional job until I took a call from Jack. Jack was an old gentleman, in his 90s, who had just come home from a month long stint in the hospital for a sickness that was going to kill him soon. The doctors gave him a couple of weeks to live, and Jack elected to die at home where he and his wife had lived together up until her death a few months prior. His kids had all booked flights for next week and were going to stay with him until the end so he could pass with dignity in the home he loved with his family. For some reason, though, Jack was frantic when he called me. He told me the internet was not working on his computer and he desperately needed it to get into his email and access pictures of his grandchildren. After quite a bit of investigation, as Jack was wheelchair bound and almost totally unable to move, we discovered his modem was dead. Jack quite literally would not be getting internet that night. He couldn't go out himself and purchase a new one. He couldn't get his home care nurse on the phone and I live thousands of miles away, completely unable to do anything for him. When I told him this, he broke down into tears and admitted that he felt God calling him back to Martha, his wife, and wanted to see those photos one more time before he passed away. I begged him to call 9 one one if he felt that way but he insisted he would not because he didn't want to die in the hospital he told me to send him another modem as soon as possible i talked with him about his family for as long as i could and then we said goodbye at the end of the call he thanked me for everything i tried to do profusely and since i'd accomplished nothing i felt absolutely awful i put in the order to overnight a new modem free of charge and we hung up the only reason I know how this ended in a call center full of 70 people taking a thousand calls a day is because a friend of mine got the next one, this time from Jack's daughter. That poor old man who just wanted to look at some pictures of his grandchildren died mere hours after he spoke to me, disappointed and alone. She was calling to find out how to return the modem I sent, which had arrived at Jack's house that morning and he'd painstakingly tried, and failed, to set up. His aged body and mind were simply unable to complete the task before he passed away. The images my mind has concocted of this man struggling in his final hours to try and achieve something so small and the gratitude he had for me despite it will probably haunt me for a very long time. TL. DR. Old man calls in for tech support. Has a broken modem. New one arrives but he is unable to set it up alone and dies without getting to see the photos of his grandchildren who live several states away. I'm done with this thread, this one is the one that got me, thank you so much for trying to help this poor man.
I'm sure you did wonders for him and you don't even know it. Even if he couldn't set it up himself. He knows someone tried. Someone once told me that hate will kill you. I don't know if I'd say that it changed my life, but it really stuck with me for some reason. I forget exactly how old I was, but anyway, at school, very small school, there were two girls in my ear. One was very pretty, let's call her A. All the guys were after her, she knew it and had her pick of the bunch. Her best friend, let's call her B, was alright in a girl next door kinda way. I was good friends with B and, I think, best friends with her brother, memory is a little hazy on the details here, anyway, I was always talking about how I wanted to be with A and acting like an ass. B helped out sometimes in getting in on conversations, I was always bitchy and difficult, bit hot, so I forgave her. Last day of school, I've never gotten anywhere with A, and I'm moving across the country tomorrow. I had made something for A and kept trying to find her so I could give it to her and tell her how I felt whatever. I'm leaving anyway, and couldn't find her all day and I start to panic as the day comes to an end. Final bell rings and I see A walking out of the playground and I go to catch up to her. B stops me just as I'm walking out the front door for the last time and says how she really loved being my friend and all the best for the future and how she hoped I got everything I wanted. Suddenly realize that I had been chasing the wrong girl all this time. I could have been spending my time with someone who I really enjoyed being around, shared common interests and who apparently cared for me on some level. Instead I was chasing a pretty girl that didn't like me and was always looking for a better deal. Never saw either of them again. Vowed not to make that mistake again. And I don't think I have. As a B, I approve this message. A friend of mine was in a bout of horrible depression. He had grown up pretty love deprived from his family. So when this girl came around for him and made him feel loved for the first time, then broke it off. He went into a combination of shock depression and heartbreak and that is when i met him he had the most fricked up head i'd ever met at that point but he ended up becoming a close friend and i just wanted him to feel better i tried so hard to drag him out of depression but it only made him push me away more i had grown up in such an emotionally stable loving and neutral family and he told me i don't want your sympathy i need empathy and then i realized that i could never provide that to him whenever i think about that I get solemn, he's the only person I've never been able to help, and I'm probably never going to be able to help. It Back in my sophomore year in high school, I was really depressed and planned to kill myself soon. I just felt like nothing was going my way, I didn't have many friends, just my girlfriend and someone who was friends with quite literally everybody. Anyway, I was waiting in the lunch line when one of the really cool, popular guys not snooty popular came up behind me. We were silent for a bit, when all of a sudden he said, Dude, Eric, you're awesome. I don't care what any of those B say, alright man. They're just jealous of you. That right there made me really happy. Here I was, a pathetic suicidal guy, and he just comes up and says that. That changed my life, and gladly, we became friends, and are still good friends to this day. When I was about 6 years old in school one day we were having a going away party for a classmate whose family was moving away. He was never someone I hung out with or really talked but got along with fairly well. On his last day we ended up next to each other and he told me the night before he had a dream about me. I remember thinking that it was really cool that this kid had thought about me. Non creepy bc I was 6. I was a pretty nerdy kid so a lot of kids didn't talk to me so I thought it was nice. Then he tells me what the dream was about. He was asleep in his room and heard noises coming from downstairs so he goes to see what it is. He walks down the hall to the stairs and looks down to see me sitting in front of his TV playing his Nintendo in the middle of the night. Then he laughs and says so I went to my parents room and got my dad shotgun and killed you. Sounds pretty lame but as an innocent 6 year old that thought someone was being nice it was a kick in the gut that someone had dreamed about killing me and laughed about it. This seriously creeped me out. My mom died when I was a baby. She and my father were both teenagers when I was born. And my dad got scared and ran. Cut to 23 years later, when after emailing back and forth, I found him online. He asked to meet me the day before Thanksgiving. It was awkward, of course. 
We managed to get through it okay, but the kicker came at the end, when he gives me a big hug and a kiss on the cheek and says, you're going to see me again, you're probably going to get sick of hearing from me, and that was the moment I knew I wasn't an orphan anymore. I don't know why, I've never experienced anything remotely close to you, but this really touched me, I'm sure he's extremely grateful that you forgave him. I was discussing how I wanted to be cremated when I die at a family dinner, my grandmother, a holocaust survivor, calmly says, no Jew should burn, um, so yeah, I guess no more viking funeral for me. It's not the manner of disposal, it's who makes the choice. In first grade I was told I couldn't be in some kids group because he had a no fat is allowed rule. To this day I still hear his voice in my head when I look at my body in the mirror. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. for now.